If you're about to take your microeconomics final exam and have been confused on what price discrimination means, I'm a tutor and this is what you actually gotta know. And before we get started here, if you wanna see where you stand for your exam, I want you to go take my free practice exam in my bio. It's a cumulative exam covering 25 of the most common types of problems I see professors put on their exams. All right, the first thing I want to take note of here with price discrimination is that for your introductory microeconomics class, you're really only going to be focusing on it happening with monopolies because of their market power. They have the ability to change prices depending on a consumer's willingness to pay. Before we dig into what that actually means graphically, let's first understand how a non-discriminating monopoly would charge price. All we're going to do here is go to the MR equals MC point, I mean that will produce, we'll say, four units. And then remember, we got to go up to the demand curve with monopolies and then go to the left to derive price. We'll call this uh, 10 bucks. Because at four units, consumers are willing to pay 10 bucks per unit because demand is our willingness to pay. Don't make the mistake of just going across here to find price for monopolies. All right, so the big thing to understand here is that this monopoly, this non-price discriminating monopoly is gonna charge 10 bucks per unit to all consumers. In turn, consumers will generate this triangle here of consumer surplus. There's some consumers that lie up here on the demand curve that value the good more than 10 bucks and in turn are getting a deal. So this triangle is essentially the additional benefit that goes to consumers for being able to pay 10 bucks per unit across the board for all units sold. Price discrimination works different here. Instead of charging 10 bucks per unit, we're gonna dynamically charge a price dependent on the consumer's willingness to pay. So how this would look is that this monopoly would know that Johnny here values the good at, we'll say 15 bucks, and Susie values it here at 14 bucks, and Sarah at 13, Timothy at 12. We're literally gonna do this all the way down to where the marginal cost curve intersects the demand curve because this monopoly can perfectly price discriminate depending on wherever the consumer lies along the demand curve. They're charging each consumer their exact willingness to pay. So this monopoly is actually gonna ignore the MR equals MC point. They're gonna output this many units here. We'll call it uh, seven. I guess technically we could do one, two, three, four, but call it nine units. Because we've mapped out nine consumers here. The reason they're gonna push beyond their MR equals MC point is because they can squeeze all of the profit out of the consumers in this market. It's not like consumers have this little triangle of consumer surplus anymore. Producers have literally taken the whole pie because they can perfectly charge each consumer their exact willingness to pay. No consumer is getting a deal here because the monopoly is dynamically setting price dependent on the consumer. All right, with that said, if you like the way I explain microeconomics and just wish somebody could walk you through this entire class, I can. I want you to go check out my microeconomics cram kit in my bio. I've packed together all the concepts and practice problems that I'd walk through with you if I were your tutor the night before your exam. Go click the link in my bio to learn more about